Ever wonder what it takes to really mix salt the right way? On well, this episode, we'll find out. So in this episode, what we're gonna go into is the first thing pretty much that everybody learns about when they come into the hobby, and that's salt. How to mix it, what it takes to make up a, a good batch of salt water, and the equipment that I recommend that you have before you even try doing this on your own. So what that includes is uh, basically the equipment um, that you need to uh, measure your salt levels, uh, also, what you should use and what primarily is the very most important thing that anyone should get when they first come into the hobby. So with that being said, let's go by the tank and check it out. Okay, so as we get into this, the very first thing that anybody should research and also um, purchase for their system when they get into the hobby is an RODI system. Uh, the one that I have is the BRS four stage RODI system. To me, this is the best piece of equipment that you can invest in when you first get into the hobby. Water quality is so important in the hobby that why risk it buying water from an unknown source or putting your faith into someone else's hands when you can control the quality of your water by having your own RODI system. Mine has a flow meter on it, as you see here, to measure the flow of my house water to let me know exactly how much um, I'm going to be putting out and the time it's going to take. I also have on my system a triple TDS monitor. This is going to measure the total dissolved solids coming out of my house water and going into my product water. Uh, mine measures input, output, and also what's going into my DI stage. Another good idea is to have a flush valve on your system. So this way, at the beginning and end is what I do. I flush my system and get any of the contaminants out of my system altogether. So this is basically what I recommend that your first investment should be, is a good RODI system. Now the tools that I use to mix my water um, always start off with a refractometer. It's, uh, make sure you research. There are two different ones that I, that I know of. One is for... Uh, um, for salinity, the other one is for alcohol measurements, and uh, just make sure you get the right one. Buy a quality one, well worth it, because um, you are measuring the product that you're putting into your tank, and again, I can't stress enough, you want that to be the best you can get. Basically what uh, a refractometer is, is you would take a sample of your water, put it on this glass plate uh, on the inside of the um, refractometer, on the top rather. And then you're going to close this little plastic screen and this is what you're going to be looking at is a measurement that gives you salinity and also specific gravity. Um, this way you get everything right. The second thing that I use is a quality heater because I want to heat my water up to 78 uh, degrees and that's basically the range that I put my uh, water that I should do water changes with. Uh, a quality heater is well worth it and you never want to put cold salt water fresh from a bucket into your tank. It's going to wind up messing things up for you. Now this one just happens to be an Aquion 300 watt heater. It's kind of over um, wattage for the bucket, but a good quality heater will um, get you a long way in heating your water um, that you're going to do your water changes in. Next what you're going to need is a power head of some kind or a pump of some kind. You're going to use this to mix up the salt that you're putting into the water. A quality one is what I would recommend. I know a lot of people use old pumps or whatever, but this, this pump's gonna take a beating because it's gonna be mixing salt together for you. So make sure you um, you know invest in a good one. Next, what you can do, and this is an optional thing, is um, a testing device to measure the pH of the water that you're putting from your bucket into your tank. When you first start out, I would recommend testing every parameter as, as soon as you mix up your product water. As you get more experience in things, you're going to know that um, you don't have to test everything as much as you did when you first started. So having something to measure the pH just to make sure it's up to what your you want your water to be at is great. Also an alkalinity tester. I do use an alkalinity tester and a calcium test on my product water when I get ready to do a water change. 
These are the things that are most important to me. I want to know what those two levels are at when I'm putting them in to my tank. I do a 10% water change every other week, so I know that um, the levels that I'm getting from Coral, uh, the, the Coral Pro, are a little higher on the alkalinity side. Um, I'm going to show you a diagram coming up that will demonstrate that, but once it dilutes into 90 gallons of water, it's going. It, it has never spiked on me at all. Now here's, I'm showing you basically what I go through. I have my Coral Pro in a bucket, in a big bag. I buy the, the biggest I can afford uh, because it's going to, um, I'm going to be <laughs> using it over time and I might as well get the biggest I can afford so this way I don't have to go back and forth in the store so much. Every salt pretty much has the same measurement. It's usually a half a cup of salt per gallon. I make mine, I, when I mix my salt, I want to be as precise as possible. So I use a measuring cup and also I have a, um, an old glass stirrer from, um, I don't even know where I got this from, honestly. And I make sure I level off each one of the half cups to make sure it's exactly a half cup of salt. Now, you're going to have people that tell you many different ways on how to mix salt. Gradually put it in. Just dump it in. There's going to be all different theories on this. I've done it both ways. It don't matter. I tend to just put mine in as, as you're seeing it now. I put in a half cup at a time. By the time I come up with the, other, the next half a cup, the one I just put in has already started mixing. So... Um, I tend, I, I don't worry about gradually mixing it and waiting it to, for it to clear up and then dumping the next half cup. I put it in, get it all stirring because later on I'm going to be checking this and I'm going to show you also uh, what tends to happen uh, sometimes. Now the location of my, of my pump is about halfway, a little bit higher than halfway on the bucket because I want to make sure I give it a good agitation and, and get as much of the salt stirred up as, at one time as possible. So, just finishing this up, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to, um, when you get salt in a bag like this, make sure I use an old 5 gallon bucket and a lid. Uh, I use one of the airtight ones so this way there's no moisture that gets into my salt. Uh, when you're using a bag such as this, I strongly urge you get a bucket of some kind. And make sure it's got an airtight lid and just snap it down. Now here's the chart that I... Um, wanted to show you and I wanted you to pay particular attention to the alkalinity measurement. I know on Coral Red Sea Pro there is a high alkalinity. I've never had a problem with this. Again, I change 10% of my water volume every other week and I've never had a problem with an um, alkalinity issue. When you get into smaller tanks it may have some kind of repercussion but uh, you may want to go with just the Red Sea Salt which has a lower and more uh, stable alkalinity. Uh, it all depends on what you like. Now, again, here I'm showing if you can make it out, there is a, a basically a part where the salt hasn't mixed well and it's sitting on the bottom of the bucket. I'm going to pull out my pump and this is the only other time I'll stick my hands in this water and that is basically just to push the pump down towards the bottom, go along the bottom of the bucket and stir up all the salt that hasn't uh, mixed in the first go round. You can see how the water itself has begun, uh, has begun to change to, uh, from clear to a little cloudier and that's just letting me know that the salt that's on the bottom of the bucket is getting redistributed and mixed in properly. Um, so here you see all the salt is being mixed. I've now placed the pump down towards the bottom of the bucket so that it will start stirring from the bottom up and giving it a final good stir. I make sure my heater is placed towards the output of my pump um, so that uh, the water heats up properly as well. So that being said, uh, basically what it comes down to is I know there are a lot of uh, different salts. Um, on the end of the video there's going to be a chart that's going to show um, basically a breakdown of how much it would cost on each of the salts. Um, don't get hung up on it. What I, my recommendation is: pick a salt, 
pick something that you like, something that your corals uh, react to in a positive way, uh, and stick with it. No matter what people say about the latest and greatest, if you have a salt that works for you, don't change it. If it's not broke, don't fix it. Don't get hung up on all the hype. I have gone into a lot of different situations where I've tried out different salts, basically just to uh, do reviews for my channel, and I have found a lot of different salts that work well, a lot of different salts that I don't like uh, as far as what they leave in my, my mixing bucket at the end. We've all heard the stories. Uh, what I re would recommend, try it, research it. Research everything that you can on salts. Watch YouTube videos, watch the different people. Look at the tank they have and see what salt they're using and try it out for yourself. If you like it, use it. If you don't, move on to the next one. So, um, basically, that's it as far as salt is concerned. So here's the chart and it breaking down uh, basically what the cost relationship per gallon would be on the different salts that are out there. Uh, again, find one that works for you. If you have any questions, feel free to drop, drop a comment down below. If you're not subscribed to the channel, hit the uh, subscribe button and the bell so you get alerts uh, to when the next video comes out. And as always, uh, this is Scott, and I will see you soon around the reef tank. Thank you for watching this episode of Roscoe's Reef with Scott. As always don't forget to like, comment, share and subscribe.